So we got Amato with us first. And the question is real simple and real true to my heart. He goes, how much do you need, uh, how much training do you need as you go into your 60s? Is it okay to train every day as we get older? Well, let me break down real fast uh, how uh, I use Nick Rain's uh, numbers, and I've done that for a long time. Basically, up to about the age of 16 or 17, I think you should play as many sports activities. You should learn gymnastics, how to ride a bike, how to swim, how to play every sport you can possibly be exposed to. Uh, have some fun. Uh, learn the values of team sports. Learn the values of individual sports. Play a lot of games. Learn how your body moves. Learn how to, you know, uh, climb ropes and, you know, do monkey bars and roll and tumble and break fall and all kinds of things, okay? Herbert taught us this uh, 100 and 200 years ago. Nothing new under the sun. From about 17 to 34 or so, uh, those are the years we can just get about. You, and sadly, the 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 uh, fitness industry is based on the people in those age groups. You can do about anything then. You know, you can do a, like, you can do zero carbs for a long time and, and, and still be fine. You can live on very little sleep and way too much partying and still look good. Uh, you can do those insane workouts and, and bounce out of the bed the next day and do it again. Then 35 hits. I think between 35 and 55 really is the most important time of your training career. Um, I think 35 to 55, it's like investing when you're like 18 to about 25. If you could fill up your uh, retirement, you know, put a lot of money into your retirement at age, you know, 18, 19, 20, whatever. And the, ma the, the magic of compound interest would set you up for life. Um, if you can get your, all the college degrees you can possibly can before the age of 22. You know, when I turned 22, I got my master's. Uh, I'm not bragging or anything. Uh, I got my bachelor's when I was 21. Um, but what was nice about it, I was here I am, you know, starting as a teacher and I've already taken care of all the big, the big heavy lifting. Um, so there is great value to being investing early in your education, investing early in retirement, but that 35 to 55 age group, that's when you invest for the long-term health span of your body, everything that happens over after, you know, 56. So get as strong as you can between the age of 35 and 55, maintain it, uh, do yourself a massive favor. I, I talk with my inner circle group. It's called, uh, you pay off your future self. Um, if you invest $10,000 in a retirement account at age 19 and it's a, it's a standard, you know, kind of growth fund. You're, you're done. I mean, the magic, that, that is such a great investment. Um, if you decide not to put on any excessive fat in your late 20s, your 30s, your 40s, early 50s, your future self will love this idea. So I'm always thinking, it's a weird thing to say like this, but I don't know the values I will have in 10 or 15 or 20 years. And hopefully I'll be around. I'm look, hoping to do that. I'm hoping to live well and take care of business. I don't know what 20 years from now me wants, but if I don't put on a lot of body fat, I keep my joints healthy. I keep some lean body mass. Uh, you know, I take good care of my teeth, my eyes, my ears, my senses, uh, my brain. Uh, future self might have a whole different set of things. Future self, your little future Danny John wants to do but I'll have some money for them and I'll have a body that's not too broken down. So now, after 56, I think you focus on basically three things. I think mobility comes first. Uh, now, that's not, that's, think, the better way to think of it is a triangle. And there's no first on this, but I'm gonna talk about mobility first. And that's the free movement around all your joints. Well, you'll notice, I, I do the, I've done this a number of times on the podcast. I start spinning my thumbs, I start spinning my fingers, I start spinning my wrist, I check my elbows out. Um, one of the things I picked up in the last uh, year or so is that I've noticed that my ankle mobility isn't where it needs to be. Now, all those years of Olympic lifting, I'm very mobile in this area, but I'm not necessarily as mobile on, in the arounds. So sometimes if you're in my house, you'll hear this kind of nasty crack, crack, and that's me, uh, moving my ankle and it's obvious when it cracks like that 
something's going on, but I don't know what. Uh, Tim Anderson has a wonderful book called uh, Dynamic Hips. And I, I love reviewing that all the time. And to be honest, you know, to summarize, uh, this probably isn't fair to Tim, but to summarize the big three things in Tim's vocabulary, you know, uh, breathing through the diaphragm, using eye control during your movements and stretches and mobility work. And then the other thing, uh, what I really get a lot out of, uh, we crossing the X, you know, working one, one side to the other. For hips, for shoulders, uh, for huge parts of your body, uh, you know, practicing your breathing, using eye control as you, as you do a movement. So I'm going to leave my eyes into that stretch and my body will follow. And then trying to make sure I do a lot of these crossing movements. I mean, that's good. That's a good foundation for the mobility work I do. Second big key, again, it's a, it's a triangle would be, uh, maintaining as much lean body mass as we can. So hooray, hooray. Once you get over 56, you need to train like a bodybuilder. You need to up the reps a little bit. Um, you, you, you probably now at, in your fifties and late fifties, sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties, hundreds and beyond, you know, it is it, certainly machine training has value. When I go down to the Murray senior center, um, uh, uh, I, I will talk like with the interns and s about a year or so, one of them had read a lot of my work and, I, and they said, oh, I thought you were against machines. Oh no, I'm not against machines. In fact, machine training is really good for many seniors. Now I like a combination of obviously kettlebells, dumbbells, barbells, suspension trainers, machines to hit all these different things. Uh, today when I was doing um, the, when I'm speaking today, uh, today is my day where I do my suspension trainer workout focus. And one of the things I try to do is I try to mess with my balance sometimes when I'm doing suspension trainer work. Go up on one foot, play around with a little bit of movement that challenges my balance. Uh, machines don't challenge your balance. and But that's okay, because their job is to help you build lean body mass. So after 55, 56, you know, sets of eight, sets of 10, sets of 12, even sets all the way up to 20 can have great value. Um, I have no issue with isolated uh, body part exercises. I think there's real value in them for many people, especially if you know your own particular physical history and you know your your gaps, your weak points and what you need to work. Um, one day a week, I spend almost the entire workout, um, half the workout, uh, doing all the T's, the Y's, the I's, all the stuff that straightens me back up after years of sitting at a desk, years of, you know, being a thrower. I'm trying to undo, in a logical way, the, the damage of, of all the years that got me here. And the final thing in our third or the, the other tip of the pyramid is at some level you have to work your fast twitch muscle fibers. Now, I don't necessarily think you have to train, you know, pull out. I got the, the triple jump encyclopedia up there. I mean, you don't need to train like a, a, a triple jumper. You don't need to do, <laughs> you don't need to leap over hurdles and boxes and, you know, do tons of single leg bounding. Uh, boy, it'd be great if you could, but, you know, now you're all, you have to slide over this. It costs a benefit. Is that, is that bounding, the box jumping, is that going to be, you know, you hurt that ankle, you know, playing on the, on the beach in, you know, 1964, uh, that ankle might show up and be a little angry now as you're, you, as you're messing around with it. So when it comes to, uh, fast twitch muscle fiber, uh, I think that through a little bit, uh, I personally like the kettlebell swing and all of its, uh, progressions and regressions. Um, you know, one thing I do notice when I do the 10,000 swing challenge, as much as I hate it and, and candidly, I hate it, is that at the end of it, uh, when I go coach my throwers and I pick up something and I throw it, uh, I, you can tell I've been working on my fast twitch muscle fibers. The kettlebell snatch might be another one. The Olympic lifts obviously would be another one. But you can also do something as simple as just, you know, um, you know, try to bound up a flight of stairs as appropriate. You know, uh, when you come to a curb, you know, don't just, you know, pop up on it like Clarence Bass taught us so many years ago. Uh, Terry Todd and Clarence Bass had this famous conversation where they talk about losing your spring. 
in your step. And that is something I, I, I have been able to really keep at bay a little bit. And, you know, as I'm, you know, I'm, let's see, I'm 67, you know, I'm, I'm closer to 70 than 60. And I read this when I was, I think, 40, 41, when I read that uh, article by Clarence Bass about spring. And I took it seriously then, and I think it was a good idea. So just kind of remember the triangle. You want to do mobility. You want to do some uh, hypertrophy work, bodybuilding work, and you want to do some fast twitch. So I love the workout generator for this because, you know, when you're doing a set of presses, you can mix it with mobility move on the ground. You do a set of pulls, you can mix it with a, a movement that you can do whatever, you know, I'm just... I don't know. I'm just free moving right now. Uh, a movement that will, will help your mobility. You do a set of squats, which if done correctly is a great mobility move, but maybe you do a shoulder thing, a shoulder movement in between your sets of squats with your hinge. Again, maybe an upper body mobility movement. And on your loaded carries, we'll do loaded carries and maybe crawling. Uh, that's the thing we do at, uh, when I work with the military. We mix loaded cr carries with crawls and uh, this one little exercise called cross crawls. We, so I'm, I'm marching in place and my right hand touches my left knee. My left hand touches my right knee. Cross crawls, and that's just one variation. Well, as everyone quickly discovers, mixing cross crawls with farmer walks with crawling is exhausting. Um, but when you get done with it, you've got a nice little, you know, there's a, there's a lot of happiness in your head. Um, I do have a video. I don't know if I ever posted it. Uh, but I'm doing, uh, I'm doing skipping, uh, cross crawls. So it's a skip motion and you bring, like in this case, I bring my right knee as high as I can and, and tap my, my left hand on it and then skip across to here, skip, skip, skip. I think that exercise, those kinds of exercises where you're blending some fast twitch stuff with some other qualities, whether it's, um, uh, oh, 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 hang on, I'm going too fast. So on that exercise, what I like about that is we're getting Tim Anderson's cross crawling with the fast twitch stuff. Uh, if you do the Olympic snatch uh, and you drop into the bottom position of the squat snatch, um, you're getting mobility, flexibility, explosion, stability, balance. You're getting everything at once. So you're going to have to uh, be smart about how you go into this. Uh, when you say, can, is it okay to train every day as we get older? Um, I have a couple of books in my library that talk about training as you age. And one of them just said something I thought was really important. When you get over 60, and that's your question, uh, every day is should be a training day. You know, every, every single day you should do something. Um, the AARP, um, the, the Association of Retired People, proud member since, I don't know, a long time now. 12 years, 15 years, whatever. Um, they recommend the same thing about doing something every day. So for me, this is my somethings, ready? Three days a week I, I lift. Sometimes it's an Olympic lift followed by walking. Sometimes it's bodybuilding movements followed by walking. One day a week I just go for a rock. I put on a, a weighted vest. I put weights in my hand and I pump my arms like Leonard Schwartz's heavy hands and I wear the rucking vest. Another day of the week, uh, Thursdays, tonic Thursday, completely turn everything down and I do an hour of flexibility, mobility, and original strength. Saturday and Sunday, I always try to do something. Saturday's new tradition is to do swings. I have a kettlebell up in my uh, TV room. And if there's American football on, I do swings. Uh, you gotta be careful with some of the games. If you do swings during the timeouts, you'll, you'll never move again because there's so many timeouts. Um, if there's, you know, a good rugby game on and I, I like soccer football, though those games keep going. So you just have to mentally say, okay, every so often I'm going to do swings on something like that. You know, if you just did, it doesn't have to be very much at all, you know, five to 10 sets of 10 to 15 reps, I mean, would be plenty, if not excessive Sunday farmer market over at the Wheeler farm. I always walk over there. Uh, my friend Chris sells the honey that my bees grow over here. Um, and I like to, uh, I always get some fresh veggies and some other things. And the walk is often two or three miles, 
which is weird because it's right there, but obviously I must do a lot of loops and stuff. So every day I do something, something. It doesn't have to be very much, but try. Uh, I suggest lifting three days a week. I suggest adding some other, some other things in, um, sprinkle in extra ideas, try new things, learn stuff. Uh, if there's a local place that has a once a week yoga class and it's 10 bucks for eight weeks, like at a senior center or something, go because you're going to learn a ton. Uh, you're going to get a lot of role models, both both kinds of role models, what you want to be when you're older and what you don't want to be when you're when you're older. And I think both kinds of role models have value. Okay, thank you very much. That's a good question. Uh, all the questions today are actually, they're, they're all like that. They're all solid. So I appreciate that.